So something that I want to talk about today is actually something I've talked about before on this channel. However, it was a long time ago and the quality kind of sucks. <laughs> so today I want to deep dive into the arts and crafts movement. For some people it's known as the craftsman style, other people might even know it as the mission style. So today I just want to go over a refreshed version of this design style. So with any good design style, we really want to start at the beginning and we want to know, you know, when did this happen and what is the arts and crafts movement? So it happened in the later half of the 19th century. Basically, it comes right after the Victorian era. It has a very different look from the Victorian era and that's intentional. It was really meant to challenge that style. A big part of the arts and crafts movement was really to deviate from things being mass produced. They really wanted to touch on that craftsman quality and having more handmade items. They really wanted to move away from items that they felt were mass produced and that were of lower quality and basically just not the same design aesthetic and same design quality as, you know, items that had come before it. So they really wanted to move back into more of a traditional style of design. They really wanted people to embrace that it was made for the people, by the people. So one of my favorite things from the arts and crafts movement is the craftsman style home. This home is absolutely stunning. When you see one, you know one. I mean, if you love it, you'll love it. <laughs> if you know, you know. <laughs> so some of the key elements on the interior of these homes you'll run into are bringing in a lot of natural materials. So you'll tend to see a lot of woods, stone, brick, and a lot of that is also handcrafted. So it isn't just, you know, having like wood structures. It's actually very specific and you can tell they use things like tapered posts and exposed wood beams, wood paneling on the walls, built-in cabinetry, um, stone fireplace surround. So all of those type of things are really traditional with this particular era and this style of home. What I loved about this style is that the fireplace was truly, you know, one of the key focal points in the home. I feel like fireplaces still are when you have them, but they really generally in the arts and crafts movement had a very particular look to it. And I find that that is something that I find really drives me into the look along with the built-ins. And a lot of times you'll see the fireplace with the built-ins and that is really key to this look of, you know, that signature style that when you see an arts and crafts home or a craftsman style home, you can kind of go, oh yeah, that looks like a craftsman style. Even if it's not from that time frame, there's certain elements that you'll think of that style when you see it. So some of the exterior elements that you'll notice on a craftsman style home, I feel like once you see one, you kind of know like that it's a craftsman style because it is very um, apparent, but is one of those really big features is definitely the big front porches. So I absolutely love a great front porch. I don't know if you guys watch that show Hometown, but they always seem to have a great front porch. So I love a great front porch on a craftsman style that is very signature to their look. Also, they tend to have low pitched roofs. So I feel like the previous era, like the Victorian era, we saw a lot more um, higher peaks as well as um, like turrets and different things that you would see like really prominent roof lines and they would, you know, do some ornamentation in them sometimes. Whereas when you move to uh, arts and crafts and the craftsman style specifically, you definitely bring that down. It has much more of a cottage-like vibe is what I would say, versus like the presence of a Victorian. So when you look at a Victorian and compare it to a craftsman, there is a very distinctive difference between the visual appearance between those two styles. So another prominent feature with the craftsman style home is exposed beams. Sometimes you'll get a little bit on the exterior, but definitely on the interior, will, you will get exposed beams, which I feel like, you know, we see that brought into many different styles, but it is really, really classic with this particular look. And as well, which is probably, I feel like a lot of people don't think about think of this when they think of an arts and crafts home, but it's actually, you know, really well known for its open floor plan. So Victorian homes were really typical of having more of a separated room structure. So your kitchen was your kitchen, your living room was your living room, your dining room was your dining room. 
the arts and crafts movement really did actually switch the narrative and wanted to make homes a lot more for the people, just like the whole philosophy behind the arts and crafts movement. And they wanted it to be a much more um, open floor plan. So if you're looking to bring in some touches of arts and crafts into your home today, this is how you can do it. So think about some bold patterns. One of the really big key elements of the arts and crafts style was these beautiful, bold floral patterns, especially seen in wall coverings. Very famous from this time was William Morris who had his own collection of prints and this is very typical from that era that you will see used very regularly and nowadays we see a much more modern version of that and I am here for it. I absolutely love it. Bringing in those bold patterns as well as that, um, that biophilic pattern, so bringing in um, floral motifs and leaves and all of the organic items is really what makes up this look. So bringing those into your home, whether it's in a powder room or in a dining room or a laundry room or a bedroom, I think that's a really nice way to add touches of the arts and crafts movement, as well as if you can find something that's more, you know, and I, I'm saying this like it's a luxury and I get it, but maybe something that's more like of a handmade or like from a local manufacturer versus purchasing it from something that's mass produced. And I only say that because in true arts and crafts fashion, it is really supporting artisans. So if there's a way to you know embrace these items while also supporting local artisans, then you really are touching on the arts and crafts movement. So bringing in natural materials within your furniture. So it goes back to what I was saying about local artisans as well. If you could touch base with somebody who actually makes furniture somewhere local to you, that's like really, really touching on this look. Now I know where I'm located. We have a really great, vibrant Mennonite community. And within that community, there are a lot of amazing craftspeople. So near me, there are different shops that they, I mean, lots of different things, but there are woodworkers who are from our Mennonite community that I know if I want to go and say, have a hutch made or even purchase stuff that they already have made a beautiful dining table or chairs that I could go there and I could buy some really beautiful locally sourced handcrafted wood items. And I think like a beautiful, big harvest table, or you know, perhaps an armoire in your bedroom, something like that, like a piece that you know you're gonna have for a really, really long time. It's totally worth the investment and you're gonna love it to pieces. It brings in that story. If you're into you know, more of that kind of maximalist or grand millennial style, again, it ties in with that you know, thought process, but definitely seeing and trying to embrace more handcrafted and natural materials. So keeping it more in its natural form as well with the wood is a way to bring in the arts and crafts feeling to your home. Some of the color palettes that you'll see, which is really on trend for right now, is the hunter greens, the burnt oranges, dark grays, the blues, golds, muted roses, and burgundies. So we're really seeing this warmth and this natural palette that's coming down the line right now, which is a big part of arts and crafts, is it definitely has that very homey and very welcoming vibe. Another big thing with arts and crafts is stained glass. This is something that you'll recognize like a Tiffany lamp, or different stained glass pieces that you can bring in certain elements. There's lots of ways to modernize this, but definitely try to embrace that in some way, whether it's through an accent piece or whether it's through like a piece of artwork, that's really, really a signature of the arts and crafts movement as well that you could bring into your home. Another thing with the arts and crafts movement, it's I think more typically known as like mission style furniture, and that is going back with the natural materials, but also there's a certain look to it. So they really do have a lot of clean lines and it's mostly made from wood. So that's, you know, stuff like cabinets and benches and stuff that you can bring in that really embrace this look as well. So some of the accents that I mentioned briefly in our wallpaper, but you can also bring in other items like in your different fabrics, in your uh, throw pillows, etc., is things that have a flower motif, a vine motif, leaves, 
birds, even geometric repeating patterns, and even stripes will really help embrace the arts and crafts um, look and feel within your home. One of the things I love with arts and crafts is, although there are a lot of really traditional items that you could bring into your home if you wanna keep it to the more traditional arts and crafts movement, there are a lot of ways to really modernize the look. One of the um, designers that I found that did some fabulous arts and crafts spaces is Ben Pentrath. You can find his information at benpentrath.com. I'll link it here. But I just wanted to show you guys some of the beautiful spaces that he created with very much an art, arts and crafts uh, integrity to them, but feels very current and very beautiful and very much on trend for what we're seeing today. So what I love about um, his designs is that it's a really modern take on this beautiful traditional style. I've also found some other really beautiful images that I wanted to share with you guys on how you can take the arts and crafts traditional movement and do it in a modern way. It's one of my favorite styles. I really love the warmth that the arts and crafts movements bring to interiors. I love the use of natural materials, large statement items, and overall the bold textures and patterns that are inviting and warm. If you are loving these images, the arts and crafts style, or hints of it, it may be for you. What I love about this style is that it can add hints of what is on trend while still being classic enough that it will stand the test of time. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. I greatly appreciate it. Definitely check on this video over here as YouTube seems to think you'll like it. <laughs> All right, guys, until next time, bye.